We're in Algebra 2, 9.3b, and we're going to discuss horizontal stretching and shrinking of a graph, and I have a theorem. Now, if you haven't seen the previous videos for Chapter 9, we're up to seven of them, you can click this video's description and watch those, and that'll hopefully clear up any confusion. You can also try watching the video again. We can draw a graph that is a horizontal stretching or shrinking of a given graph. And we learned in the last video, if we divide y by a constant, a graph is stretched or shrunk vertically. That was 9.3a, and that is in the description. You can click on it. So if we just divide x by a constant, a graph is stretched or shrunk horizontally. So for vertically, it was the y. Now it's the x. So here's our theorem. In an equation of a relation dividing x, wherever it occurs in that equation, by a constant d, does the following to a graph. The absolute value of d is greater than 1, the graph is stretched horizontally. And if the absolute value of d is less than 1, it's shrunk horizontally. And if d is negative, the graph is also reflected across the y-axis. And if d is negative 1, we're replacing x by negative x, and we get a reflection without stretching or shrinking. Now, I know this can sound confusing, but stay with me, okay? So here we have two drawings. We've got the parent function, y equals the function of x, and we can see that it's at negative 5 on this side and 5 on this side. See that? So y equals a function 2 times x, is going to shrink it. We went from a negative 5 to a negative 2 and a half. That cut it in half, didn't it? So this graph shrunk. The y equals the function of 2 times x. This constant is grouped with x. See how it's grouped in the parentheses? So it's horizontal scaling. Now, we can rewrite it as it equals x divided by a half. So what's happening here is, if this is confusing you real quick, We've got 2x, that's 2 times x, isn't it? We can also say it's x times 2 over 1. It's the same thing, right? When we divide, we flip it around to its reciprocal, don't we? So that would give us x divided by a half, because fractions are just little division problems, aren't they? So that's how they got the x divided by half, okay? We're just flipping it around from multiplication to its reciprocal. Now, it's divided by less than 1. So it's going to shrink by half. That theorem said that if the absolute value of d is less than 1, it shrinks horizontally. So we know this one's going to shrink, and it did, by half. See that? All the function values were halved, and the graph shrunk horizontally. So here's y, and here's x. If you divide y by the constant, it's going to stretch or shrink vertically. But if x is divided by the constant, it's going to stretch or shrink horizontally. See that? Now the other thing to notice about this graph and the graphs that I've drawn is there's no arrows on the n, are there? See? On any of them there's no arrows. When the graph of the function of x does not have arrows at both ends, it means the domain's restricted to that amount. So this is at negative 5 and positive 5, so it's restricted to x being greater or equal to negative 5 or less than or equal to 5. See? For the function of y equals function of x. See that? All right, so now take a look at this one. This one's stretching, and we've got y equals the function times half x. So again, what's happening is we've got half times x or x times a half, right? And to divide it, we have to flip it around to its reciprocal. So x is being divided by 2. See that? And the constant is grouped with the x, so it's a horizontal scaling. And now we have got x divided by 2. It's divided by a greater than 1, isn't it? So it's going to stretch times 2. So the negative 5 times 2 becomes a negative 10. The negative 3 times 2 becomes a negative 6, and our graph is being stretched. And we can graph it using these values. See how the y stayed the same, but the x changed? Each x-coordinate was doubled, and the graph stretched horizontally. The absolute value of d was greater than 1, so it stretched. See that?
me step back a little bit for you. See how that happened? All right, let's take a look at this one. Here's our parent function. We've got y equals a function of x. And when you look at it, it's the same one, negative 5 on this end, 5 on that end. It's the same ones as we did over here and up there. But now we've got y equals the function of negative half times x. See? So what happens is we've got x divided by a negative 2. And this is actually, we're going to use the absolute value, aren't we? So we've got a 2, so that's greater than 1, so it's going to stretch horizontally. And when we multiply x by that negative 2, we have negative 5 times negative 2 gives us a positive 10. Negative 3 times negative 2 gives us a positive 6. And we can graph it using these values in our function table. See how y stayed the same again? And we get it to stretch. See that? The absolute value of the constant was greater than 1, so it stretched. So remember, we're using the absolute value, okay? I hope that made sense. I know this can be confusing for some. Our next video is 9.4a, and we're going to graph the function of x equals ax squared and the function of x equals a times x minus h squared. I'm going to add this video to the Algebra 2 playlist for you. It's going to be a link to Chapter 12 about relations and functions. And I know 12.4 talked about graphing functions. And there's going to be a link to those previous set, uh, seven videos in this description. So you can just click on them, okay? So again, if you're confused, try watching some of the previous videos or watch this one again. I tried to break it down as much as I could, and I hope this was helpful. And I hope you're having a great day. And keep trying, okay? See you next video. Bye.